the M50. It's so responsive, man. It's so responsive. And with two size, basically I have the same shield loader as the as the Gladius. All right. Into that turn, charge the guns back up. Here we go. In that turn. Get in front of him here. Right there is the invert the fight again. And the nice thing about the M50 is two little size two guns is I can continuously keep pressure up. So him getting his shields back is, is very, very difficult. So now I've got him red. But there we go. Good fight, brother. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Alright, let's see here. The nice thing about using lag pip, uh, so we got a question in chat saying, why use lag pip, right? It's because my eyes are on target. So when I switch to leads, I'm looking at the actual pip. I'm not looking at the ship, right? So I'm, I'm just looking at what I'm trying to aim at, right? And if he makes any movements to counter that pip, it's going to change things, right? But if I use lag pips, where are my eyes now? My eyes are actually on the target itself. They're not on the pip, right? Which allows me to look at my target and be like, okay, he's now orientated this way. I can actually go up across his nose, right? I keep looking at him, keep looking at him. I know he's going to ar arrest his motion here. I can kind of move across 45 degree turn to get a higher turn rate, get myself back to center. Corkscrew that through. Now get the distance, get the guns back up. Right, and then as soon as I start receiving fire, I shake it off. And there it is. Let's have some fun. Vanguard Sentinel and a Avenger Titan. Woo! So this the Sentinel's gonna have a little bit of trouble keeping up with me, so if I can separate the Sentinel. Because you're gonna buzz past now, so I'll change my vector quickly, make it difficult for you to hit. I'll engage the Aegis Avenger. Small little target, makes it hard to hit. Can't, can't, can't run away from the... <laughs> Uray's here, what's Uray in? Gladius. I'll leave the Vanguard to last. Small maneuvers, shake off any damage incoming from the vanguard. There we go. Sentinel. Best for last, baby. Stay in the slot. Can't run away from the M50. There's no getting away from it. It's like a little devil spawn. Imagine a gang of these things attacking. Like, it would be hilariously terrifying. So there's gonna walk across his nose here. Corkscrew. Woo. 
Welcome back, everybody, to another episode. And honestly, there is so much to unpack on this episode. It's it's uh, it's going to be pretty exciting because these are some pretty cool fights. And uh, I kind of just want to talk about some basic fundamentals again. Um, some things we did right, like right here, what's called matching trajectory. So you can see that my bottom thrusters are kind of matching the direction of his slide direction. And so, boom, there he goes. We've got lots of damage applied. And then once again, once we've got the kill, we want to keep our head on a swivel. We want to look around. We want to pick out which one is going to be the next person to engage me. It's also based on ship too, right? We know that the uh, the Gladius is going to have a much easier time staying with me. So it's better we go after the Gladius first and leave the Vanguard for last because the Vanguard is going to have a much harder time uh, staying close to me while I engage this uh, light fighter. But right here i kind of want to show like the strength of the m50 even though she's got two size two guns it's not a lot of firepower the point is you have a lot of sustained damage and right here is really it, it kind of goes to show like the absolute power of the gladius I, I apologize m50 against the gladius which is i'm so tiny and my my cross section is so tiny and again right this is one of the things where uh, you know, maybe CIG should be taking note as to why small stuff like the M50s and snub fighters are so powerful. Because having a small cross section makes all the difference. It makes all the difference when it comes to applying damage. And um, fortunately for me, in the uh, M50 here, there's another splash, is uh, we've got the same shield loadout that the Gladius has. We have two size one shields. Now I'm not sure why a racer has two size one shields and then in uh, like a light fighter <clears throat> the arrow only has one size one shield but um the M50 right now is very solidly sitting inside what's called A tier. I put it in A tier and I'm very confident in my positioning of the M50. Um having such a miniature cross section paired with very fast maneuverability Paired with enough DPS, honestly, to get the job done. And paired with two size one shields. I mean, you can basically pick people to death. I mean, this Vanguard here is going to be struggling. Absolutely struggling to get the M50 off him. Because any kind of distancing he tries to do here, you'll see he's trying to use his main thrusters. Desperately, desperately trying to use his main thrusters to get away from the M50, but it's just not enough. Like, it's just not enough. The M50 is going to stick on you like glue. <laughs> you know, from uh, to quote someone from the stream, um, you're going to apply yourself like a debuff uh, against somebody. It's like, I've got the M50 on me. It's like, yeah, well, guess what? It's not coming off. Like, <laughs> you're just not going to shake the M50. And, uh, you know, another trick with staying close on your target is, again, it's all positioning. Look at the direction of where I'm sliding. In order for me to stay close, there we go, I just crossed his nose. Now I'm going to start to roll so I can cross the other side for the other S turn. And as I'm doing that, I'm always orientating the bottom of my thrusters so that I'm always sliding towards my opponent rather than away. So we know he's going to move up and to the right. We want to roll. So our bottom thrusters are pulling us, pulling us, pulling us towards our opponent. Always pulling, pulling, pulling towards our opponent as we slowly and surely keep pushing as, as we maintain our throttle discipline. I have an absolute blast flying the M50. It is butter smooth, super precise, extremely fast. And on top of that, it's got two shields and it's got enough DPS, honestly, to get the job done. Um, a lot of PVP players out there who understand, like I do, the strengths of the M50 a swarm of M50s would be absolutely terrifying to deal with. And uh, with its small signature, I mean, you could fit quite a few M50s on the deck of a ship. So as a carrier-based, essentially, snub fighter, I mean, the M50 really has no equal. Not even the Archimedes or the Merlin has a chance against an M50. On top of that, she's got a quantum drive. So um, I call the M50 the A-wing of the Star Citizen universe. And I can quite honestly say... It holds that title to um, with much respect. The problem is most pilots out there are not going to be able to utilize the M50 like you just saw. 
most pilots uh, need months and months and months of training to be able to get the M50 to that point. And I do appreciate and like that there are ships out there that cater towards the much higher skill ceiling style of gameplay. However, it's my belief that a racing ship designed for winning heat trials probably shouldn't be the best at dogfighting when it comes to um, its multi-role purpose. So maybe if they want to consider making a military version of the M50, I'd be kind of cool for that. But yeah, other than that, right now the M50 and 315 is performing exceptionally well. And if you put the stick time in and you really utilize all your basic fundamentals of flight, the M50 will bring you home with a kill count you won't imagine. And honestly, if you can move this thing right, you feel invincible. All right, guys, I hope you were entertained. I hope you learned something. And ultimately, I hope to see all of you folks up for the stream. Take a look at Predator Mounts if you're interested in any kind of mounting systems for your joystick. I was Avenger 1, and I'll see you next time.